Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Holy One of Israel. Great is thy faithfulness, O Lord, our Father. There is no shadow of turning in thee. Thou changest not thy compassion, they fail not. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto us. Hallelujah. Good morning, Holy Spirit of God, and welcome. Welcome into our presence. Welcome into our day. Thank you, Lord, for this day that you have made for us, a day that we can rejoice and be glad in. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your presence. Thank you for infilling us. Thank you for transforming us. Thank you for making a difference in our lives. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Take full control of this atmosphere, all of you and none of us. Shut down every assignment of the enemy. Shut down every plot, scheme, and trap of the enemy. We ask, O oh God Almighty, that you dispatch angels, even now, warring angels, to encamp round about every Fourth Watch family member, to wake up, to shake up, to pull up, to fix, to heal, to deliver, to set free, to make whole every member of this family in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Lord, let this time be the time when your angels war for every soul that is represented by the Fourth Watch family in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let no witch, no warlock, no, no secret society, no evil one have any part or lot, no principality nor power, nor spiritual wickedness in high places, have any part or lot with any member of this family in the mighty name of Jesus Christ I declare that our possessions are too hot for the enemy's hands I declare that our children are too hot for the enemy's hands I declare and decree that our businesses our marriages our relationships our friendships our health is too hot for the enemy's hands in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth I declare and decree that our, our bank accounts are too hot for the enemy's hands in the name of Jesus Christ I declare and decree that our, our our sleep time hallelujah is too hot for the enemy's hands our devotional time is too hot for the enemy's hands I declare and decree that we are blessed and highly favored that we are the anointed of God that we walk in the fullness of the spirit of the living God and that we are blessed with the, the, the spirit of wisdom and understanding the spirit of counsel and might the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord and so Holy Spirit as you come as you manifest this morning this day this afternoon this evening what Whatever time zone your people are in I thank you Holy Spirit that you are walking in the fullness of, 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 of God's goodness in us and through us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth I declare and decree that we are more than conquerors every enemy that come against us we conquer them everyone like Gideon we lose no war like David we are star we win every war because we fight not against flesh and blood but against principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness in high places and therefore the sword of the spirit and the shield of faith and the whole armor of God is our weapons our, our protection our covering and you, O oh Lord, is our strength. I thank you for strength. I thank you, Lord God Almighty, that we are strengthened by your very presence in us and through us. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we declare and decree that as Elijah was strong enough and, 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 and available enough to take out the 850 prophets of Baal, so are we in the mighty name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, that 850 demons shall pale in comparison. Hallelujah. To what we will take out in the mighty name of Jesus Christ I thank you Lord that we are we are mighty warriors for ourselves for our family for our community and even for our nation I thank you that there is no fourth watch family member that does not have a sharp tongue in the realm of the spirit to destroy the works of the enemy that does not have a learned tongue to encourage to edify to exhort and to comfort those who are in need in the mighty name of Jesus Christ I thank you that there is no fourth watch family member that does not have the tongue of the learned the tongue of the evangelist that will win souls for the kingdom that will testify 
hallelujah, of your goodness in the land of the living and draw men unto you. I thank you that there is not a Fourth Watch family member that does not have a light that shines, a light that is never under a bushel, a light that men will see our good works and glorify you, our Father who art in heaven. I bless you this morning, O God Almighty, for this family, and I declare and decree that there is not one member of this Fourth Watch family that is lazy, that is slothful, that is in, in, engaged in any form of immorality deliberately i thank you lord that your forgiveness is our portion and we access that forgiveness by constantly and daily repenting and turning from our sinful ways i thank you lord that forgiveness is the portion of every christian but especially the fourth watch family members i thank you lord that our consciences are pricked and not seared our consciences are lined up and completely submitted into you O oh god that where we are failing where we are flawed where we have fallen short i thank you lord that we will keep short accounts that we will consistently and constantly be at your feet saying lord i have messed up forgive me lord i have said what i should not have said forgive me i thank you lord that we will be so sensitive to the holy spirit who is our best friend that we O oh god almighty will not hallelujah embrace or maintain or sustain any sinful way in us in the mighty name of jesus we thank you lord that as you flush us each day as you are bought anything that is evil in our system and flush us out god when the enemy comes he will find nothing in any of us in the mighty name of jesus christ of nazareth i thank you this morning oh gracious wonderful god that we are cleansed sanctified purified like the like the high priest joshua in zachariah 3 that stood before the angels as you dispatch them to to to, to anoint him to place a fresh mitre upon his head and a fresh robe a new robe upon his body i thank you lord god almighty that this morning we is our re-robing is our re 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 head gearing a new crown is being placed upon our heads not a crown that replaces the one that we had but an upgrade <coughs> excuse me I thank you this morning, O oh God, for the upgrade, 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 because a crown awaits every every saint in heaven, uh, depending on the on the works, depending on our commitment, our covenant, depending on how much of what you have called us to do we have done. And so I thank you, Lord, that every fourth watch family member qualifies qualifies today for an upgrade because we have given birth to love, to more love. We have given birth to sacrifice. We have given birth to service. We have given birth to the work of our hands being led by your spirit. And so I thank you, Lord, for an upgrade, an upgrade in the robe of righteousness, an upgrade in the crown, hallelujah, that covers our head, that symbolizes to the world, the spirit world and the natural world, that we are kings and priests called by you in the mighty name of jesus christ thank you lord for the upgrade in our anointing the upgrade in the manifestation of the fruit of the spirit and the gifts of the spirit thank you lord that this morning is upgrade morning lord that as we come before you today that it is a day of recall like when cars are not working so good and there is a recall for an upgrade i thank you lord that this morning we come before you as a recall for an upgrade and so lord upgrade us upgrade upgrade our anointing upgrade our intelligence upgrade our knowledge upgrade our wisdom and understanding upgrade our spirit of counsel and might upgrade our spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord upgrade our connection to the fruit of the Spirit upgrade the manifestation of the fruit of the Spirit upgrade O God our gifts of the Spirit and the manifestation of the gifts of the spirit let us be examples of you in the earth in this season in the mighty name of jesus christ wherever we were and whatever we were doing yesterday father i thank you this morning as we wake up in your mercies our request of you is for an upgrade in the mighty name of jesus christ upgrade 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 no more 10.0 no more 10.1 oh father god we are looking at hallelujah 
upgrade to 22.2 in the mighty name of Jesus Christ the highest level whatever the best brand is on the market whatever brand you have created for this season whatever brand oh God of operation you have anywhere in the world we thank you God that every fourth watch family member this morning is being upgraded to the best brand the best level the best efficiency the best and most effective service that is available in the market right now father during the times and the seasons of other people and other generations smith Wittlesworth was the best upgrade Catherine Coleman was the best upgrade and so Lord God Almighty in this season Joshua Selman is one of the best upgrades and so we ask oh God that you will upgrade every Fort Watch family member bar none I don't care where they are in their walk where they are in their talk where they are in their sight or in their hearing or in their thinking father may an upgrade take place that we will catch up with the rest of the things that needs to catch up I thank you that you are no respecter of man and you do not call man because of their perfection but you call man because of their heart and then you perfect their, 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 their status and so Lord call and upgrade call and upgrade every fourth watch family member this morning we thank you for upgrade that men will see and know that we are truly those that sat at your feet like Mary we sit at your feet this morning oh God faithfully and say Lord pour into us pour into us pour into us oh God pour your anointing pour your power pour your grace pour your mercy pour your love pour your peace pour your joy pour your Shekinah glory into us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ we turn our cups up and we say Lord fill us up until we overflow fill us up oh God and let us overflow we want to run over with you we want to run over for true we want to run over with more and more of you and so upgrade us this day oh god upgrade us that we may stand in the fullness of boldness that we may stand oh god in confidence that we may stand hallelujah in power and anointing and glory upgrade hallelujah let none miss this upgrade this morning oh god almighty hallelujah and for those oh god who have not yet arisen out of the slumber i thank you father that you are dispatching dispatching hallelujah uh, uh, warring angels even now you are dispatching angels to to homes oh hallelujah oh god almighty to touch toes to touch heads to touch nose to touch eyes to touch whatever needs to be touched so that they can arise in the in the fullness of your goodness arise fourth watch family members wake up from slumber wake up from slumber arise in the fullness of god's goodness fresh 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 move fresh anointing fresh grace fresh mercy in the mighty name of jesus christ lord let every fourth watch family member hallelujah receive an injection of strength of health of energy of joy of peace right now in the mighty name of jesus christ of nazareth glory be to the name of the holy one of israel great is thy faithfulness hallelujah 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 a fresh move of your spirit oh god cleanse and purify let every person who is having any kind of issue this morning any person oh god who is having any family situation any health situation any financial situation any marital situation hallelujah any business situation any job situation we place them before you this morning anyone who is desirous of a greater level of relationship with you a greater intimacy with your holy spirit a greater intimacy with your word with your with your communication i thank you this morning oh god almighty that you are in that mood to fix to heal to deliver to set free to upgrade to change to transform to re re reconcile in the mighty name of jesus christ whatever is needed in the in the lives of your our family members oh god we pray that you will do it do it with, with speed do it with power do it with might do it with dominion do it oh god almighty and take control for there is nothing we desire more than for you to be in control of every area of our lives in the mighty name of jesus christ of nazareth glorify yourself O holy one of israel for you are awesome in this place and you are the almighty god you are worthy you are worthy you are worthy lord 
You are worthy, you are worthy, you are worthy, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord Most High. How great, how great, how great, how great is our God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Hallelujah, good morning, Trevor. Hallelujah. Good morning, Trevor West. Praise God. Sister Pansy Watson. Hallelujah. Nicholas. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Good morning, Vinette. Vanette. And thank you for joining us. Thank you this morning. Hallelujah. Sean. Sean laughs. Oh my goodness. Wow. I'm telling you, these names are so amazing. The names that are on TikTok and Instagram are absolutely amazing facebook is so much simpler with names hallelujah but good morning to each and every one of our family members on youtube hallelujah instagram TikTok, and facebook good morning to each and every one of you evangelists good morning to the apostles the prophets the teachers the pastors good morning to you in any office that you hold ministers come on hallelujah elders deacons uh deaconess hallelujah whatever role you play in the kingdom and even if you have not started to play any role yet from an officer perspective but you are still hallelujah kingdom citizen doing your best and testifying of god's goodness good morning and blessed love of the lord jesus christ to you to each and every one of you let me tell you your sacrifice has not gone unnoticed i know you feel like you are the one hallelujah doing making the effort and need to make the effort to be a part of what god is doing but i'm telling you my god the god that we serve the god of abraham isaac and jacob the god of shadrach meshach and abednego the god of daniel hallelujah the god of david when you look at his history he admires sacrifice come on once it was the sacrifice that of, of bullocks and and, and and doves and sheep hallelujah but now it's the sacrifice of of lives the sacrifice the human sacrifice that we give to him of time and treasure come on and focus and importance that's the sacrifice that god now accepts and admires hallelujah but still he hasn't changed obedience is still valued more in god's heart than sacrifice if we sacrifice by obedience then that's the best sacrifice there could be but if we sacrifice just because we want to say we sacrificed then that is not pleasing in his sight but obedient sacrifice is what is that's why he says in your in your giving make sure it is what you have positioned in your heart to do not to sacrifice just because you want to get something from him or because you want to prove to others that you can sacrifice or as a religious ritual you do not give tithe or offering or any seed out of any other motive other than obedience to god's word amen hear me carefully no one not even your home church no one outside if someone is hungry if someone is hungry and you see them and you have this world's good and you decide that you're going to give it to them and you're going to take photographs and let everybody and go on instagram and say look i'm feeding i'm feeding a hungry person i'm feeding a homeless person then that's not the obedience that god is looking for and hence that sacrifice is not accepted but if you set your heart to be a blessing to someone and it is caught and broadcast then that still is accepted by god because it wasn't your heart position to broadcast to everyone that you're giving but to broadcast to every but someone broadcast that you are living so there's a place where we can just do it because we're giving and a place where we do it because we're just living amen it is living in obedience to the word that God desires living in obedience to the world that God desires and when promotion comes to those who are living as God desires then that's good because it is God who will be promoted because the first thing that anyone will know is that I'm not doing this because I like it I'm not doing this because I have to 
I'm doing this because God says so. Like Peter and the disciples, when they were in the boat, they fished all night and they came back and nothing. And they were washing out their nets and hanging up their nets to dry so that they could go back the next day. And Jesus turned up a carpenter, one who didn't know anything about fishing, nothing about fishing in the natural, but he knew everything about fish. Come on, hallelujah. Jesus didn't know anything about fishing in the natural, but he knew everything about fish because he created them. Amen. So he knew what they would do. He knew he could even in his mind call them and they would come. Oh, somebody didn't get that. Hallelujah. And so when he said to the, the, the fishermen, the ones who were expert in the natural, come on, he said, go out there. Good morning, Sister Sharika. Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless your family. Hallelujah. I declare God's favor in your household. I declare that Perth is blessed because of you, because you are there. Hallelujah. Your household is blessed. I speak peace and joy and excellence to you and to your children. I speak uncommon business advancement to your, your, your business in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Right. And so God said, Jesus said to, to Peter and the disciples, push out again in the deep push out in the deep and cast your net on the right side and they're like what what is this man saying what is this man saying he's not even a fisherman last time i checked he was a carpenter come on there's so many times that we have left god out of some things we've left god out of the, the, the career of our lives we've left god out of our accounting career or business decisions because god is not a businessman god is just god Come on, God doesn't know how to fix a marriage. God is not married. Hallelujah. We leave God out of so many things and we don't realize that that's why we shouldn't leave him out because he's God. He, being God means that he is ready for everything, that he's greater than everything, that everything was created by him and for his glory in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And so what was profound in that scripture, hallelujah, hear me carefully, what was profound in that scripture is that though, hallelujah, did you say sound is gone? Hallelujah, sound, sound, sound. Um, hallelujah, hallelujah. Can you hear me now, Junior? Is anyone else um, struggling to hear? Anyone else, sound is gone? Junior, check if it's on your side. Check if it's on your side, because everyone else seems to have sound. Okay. The other persons are hearing, Junior. Check your side, please, my brother. Um, right. And so, it's important not hearing. Um, hear you clearly. Uh, sorry, Junior, it seems like it's on your side. You may need to, to come off and come back on, brother Junior. It's only you, bro. Only you. Only you, Junior Cool. Hallelujah. Okay. It's okay now. Great, great. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord Most High. Praise God. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Good job. Right. And so, um, listen to me carefully, guys. So, so, so Jesus said to them, uh, push out to the deep and cast your net on the right side. Hallelujah. Now, when you think about it, what does God know about accounting? What does God know about marketing or sales? Does God even care? Does God want to be involved in those things? Yes, he does. He says, in all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. There is nothing that is created, nothing that is made that was not made by him. Come on. Hallelujah. 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 Uh, ah, jeez. Junior is still not hearing me. Come, Junior, come off and come back on. I wonder if I, I don't even know sign language. Um, you may need to dis, dis, disconnect, disconnect, Junior, and come back. Can you read my lips? Disconnect and come back. You are the only one not hearing. Oh, Jesus. Oh, type to him. Somebody please type to him. Somebody please acknowledge him. Please help me. Yes, thank you, Marlon, for that suggestion. That's a good suggestion. Or choose another device. That's right, Sister Quenda. Hallelujah. Um, somebody just type. Just say, Junior Cool, please disconnect and come back because everyone else is hearing. 
Hallelujah. Right. And so, guys, as we as we mature, as we grow in God, it's important for us to be able to identify, recognize. Hallelujah. Yes. And um, and obey because that's where our blessing lie. Our blessing lie in our obedience to God. Hallelujah. I, I, <laughs> yes. Our blessing lies in our obedience to God. And so even though Jesus didn't know anything about fishing, Peter sensed in his spirit. Peter discerned that this Jesus who doesn't know fishing, no fish. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So whatever business you're in, Jesus may not know in the natural how to do what you do, but he knows, come on, how to, to, to gain the outcome. Ah, hallelujah. Okay. Junior is back up on hearing. Praise God. We don't want anyone to miss any of this teaching. And so Jesus always know what it is. So we may think he doesn't know HR the way that we know HR. We've been trained in human resource management and, and, and processes and techniques and brochures and all these things. We're trained in sales and in marketing. But the truth is, who are we HRing? Who, which human resource are we trying to manage? The ones that God created. And so if you truly want to manage people, then the one who created people is the best one to get on your side, to guide you and to direct you. Just like if you want to catch fish, the best person to give you counsel on how to find the fish is the one who made the fish. Come on, this is an uncommon revelation you're getting here this morning. I don't believe that you have ever heard this this way before. And so the reason why God continues to encourage us like he did in Deuteronomy when he says, I place before you life and death, blessing and curse. And then he says, choose life. He's saying choose life because he's the one that came to give life and life more abundantly. And if you choose life, you will have it abundantly. That means now and in the future, a hundredfold now and a hundredfold in, the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in eternity. And so he's saying, come on, glory to God. You, you, you might be in, in, in the textile business or in the teaching business, but who are you teaching? the people that he created come on and so he knows the people he created so he can give you strategies to reach those who you you are struggling to reach right now amen hallelujah and so you know yesterday i heard i i i got a very sad news one of our one of our family members who um who 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 is I don't want to say too much, but um, who is in a, a particular job and has an assistant who is necessary to help to make things run smoothly in that work environment, and um, and the assistant became so frustrated with the with the with the, the product that they have been given to manage that the assistant just in a huff took up her things and left yesterday and left our sister in the lurch, left her alone to manage something that it requires at least two, sometimes even three people to manage. But I'm saying to you today that God is not taken by surprise. All we have to do is obey him. He's the one that created the product that we are managing. And so all we have to do is say, Lord, in the same way that you told Peter, push out because I know where the fish are. Why do I know where the fish are? Because I made them. I know where they will be. I know how they think. I know what they need to do. I know that I I can get them to be where I want them to be because I am their creator. Is somebody getting excited this morning? I'm coming at you with a revelation that tells you that you need to acknowledge him in all your ways because he created everything that you are trying to accomplish. He's the creator of everything that we're trying to win. He's the one that, hey, come on, glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's correct, Marlon. He told them to gather there. Because his glory must be magnified. He must be glorified. And so he might not know how to, to, to build a net or to put a hook on a line and put a bait on a hook. Hallelujah. He might not know how to do that. But he knows how to gather fish. Oh, somebody didn't hear me. He knows how to gather fish. Whatever we need to succeed, God knows how to gather it. He may not know how to make bills, monies, 100 US, 
10 US, 5 US, 20 US. Come on. He may not know how to make the bills, but he knows the people who know how to make them. And so he will cause those who know how to make money to make money just for you. Oh, somebody didn't hear me. If you need customers and you're there worried and wondering why, Lord, my product not attracting customers. It's not that your product not attracting customers. You need the one who made the customers to bring the customers for you. And so you need a new marketing manager because it's not telling people in God's kingdom. It's not telling the people about the product. It's telling the product about the people. And so you bring the people to the product to the product amen hallelujah hallelujah we in the in in our dispensation of this niche of, of our situations take the product to the people in god's thing he brings the people to the product oh you didn't hear that no man can come to the father unless the holy spirit draws him draws him so satan who is the author of this world come on he goes after people he grabs people and he forces them to do what he wants them to do jesus stays where he is stays at, at um, in heaven he stays and he says listen come unto me all who are burdened and heavy laden come unto me and i will give you rest come unto me so the same way he called the fish to come to exactly where the boat would be is the same way he called the men to come to exactly where he know they will be so that we can catch them we can minister to them amen and so all we have to do is be obedient and we will have victorious catches peter was very profound when he said lord in, in his mind come on can we can we have a little phone i'm not adding or subtracting from the scripture but i wouldn't be myself if i didn't have a little fun with the word amen so i'm gonna make peter jamaican for a little bit can i just make peter jamaican for a little bit lord forgive me <laughs> peter jamaican hey the jamaican peter would say this 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 carpenter man just because i respect him you know i respect him as my teacher i respect him as my teacher i i, I but he doesn't know anything about fishing or in patwa he would say oh i'm to him sir sure him just gonna make man work for nothing again but guess what they knew that he knew fish they knew that he knew fish he didn't know fishing but he knew fish obedience is oftentimes not void come on Hear me now. Obedience is not void of knowledge. Obedience is not void of knowledge. Our obedience to God is not void of the knowledge of who God is. If our obedience is void, then we are hypnotized. It's not free will. Oh, you didn't hear that. Peter and the other guys in the boat had to know that Jesus had supernatural powers they knew this if he was just a truly 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 regular carpenter who knew nothing about the sea couldn't swim never been out on a boat or any of those things they probably wouldn't listen to him but they knew that even though he has never done any of those practical things come on because of what he knew because of who he was at that time they knew that if he said push out and cast your net on the, on the opposite side, that they would be victorious. Amen? And so you, you ask the question, how did they come to know who Jesus is? From time spent. We can never know who Jesus is and what Jesus requires of us. We can never truly trust him unless we spend time with him. Time in prayer time in the word so the disciples spent time with jesus and they got to know even things that were not spoken uh, uh, those of you who are, who are who have been married for a long time come on junior i'm gonna use you as an example this morning junior you've been married for a few years well marlon not married yet so um we'll leave him out of the picture for now hallelujah but junior um i i i say this to you 
there are things now that you will see your wife could come in one day and based on based on her facial expression you will know mm -hmm, she had a rough day let me get some warm water ready so I can rub her feet let me put on some tea because with her favorite chamomile or earl grey tea or, or mint hallelujah so that she can she can relax and be comfortable because i know when her face looks like that she had one of those days she didn't have to say it come on hallelujah she 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 she, she may have um just hit her toe outside but you know how that expression looks you know her body language you know the things that you know because of the years of experience i'm saying to you guys in order to truly know god we got to spend time with him we got to spend time in his word time listening see junior agree come on in the same way you get to know your partner the same way you get to know your children the same way you get to know your boss the same way you get to know you even your customers in your in your in for your company the same way you get to know when someone comes in what they really are looking for what they would like come on somebody is the same way we got to get to know God we got to spend time with him and so by Peter and the, the disciples spending time with Jesus uh, they recognize that he didn't know much about how to do things in the practical outside of carpentry but he knew every element of everything from the other side of it and so all you had to do was trust him so when he said push out on the other side push out and cast your net on the other side they already had a feeling that if he was asking them to do this that he had an outcome in mind he wasn't just guessing he wasn't gonna send them out there before everyone was on the beach because remember there were other fishermen that were on the beach washing their nets as well and God would not embarrass himself because because his word is true it's yea and amen his word cannot return void but must accomplish that which was said it was sent out to accomplish and so can you imagine if Jesus did no fish if Jesus did no fish and didn't know where fish would be or didn't have the power to call fish to gather in a particular spot what would happen he would send his friends out there and they would be out there with the net afraid to come back in because them say Lord we shame oh lord we are embarrassed we're not coming back in jesus would have to tiptoe away from the beach or do a michael jackson slide to get away from the people who were laughing and embarrassing hallelujah but the disciples know that jesus had a track record of whatever he said would come to pass whatever he said do you have a track record of god's word to you coming to pass can you hold on and do something foolish before people because jesus's track record has not failed his track record to you can you be can you risk embarrassment knowing fully well that the god who has told you to do go with a word is a God who speaks clearly ah can you a hey, mm -mm, hallelujah hallelujah and so Peter said something very profound that we all should learn to say every day Lord we've toiled all night we've prayed and fasted and we have not seen what we expected to see and you're telling us to go back on a three-day fast now I'm not interested in that I'm hungry I want to go eat some oxtail or some curry goat or some 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 steak and eggs I want to go eat something nice I don't, I don't feel like going back on a three-day fast now because I didn't see what I was expecting to see but nevertheless nevertheless because you say so I will obey nevertheless because you say so and so we must know our Lord we must know our Lord in such a way that when he asks us to do something unusual or unique, we are able to genuinely say, nevertheless, nevertheless, at your request, we will become our best and pass this test. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. So it's important, guys, that we press in and get to know our Lord because when his voice speaks, when he says, go do this, go do that, we must be ready. We must be ready. We must be ready to do it and accomplish what we can accomplish by his power, by his spirit, in the name of Jesus Christ.
Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. And so I just pray for each of us this morning that we will be sensitive to the spirit of the living God, that we will have a knowledge. Father, we pray that you will give us a knowledge, a revelation, an understanding of you, your heart, your thoughts, your ways, so that when you ask us, when you request of us, when you require of us to do something that is unusual, that is out of the human norm, that is outside of the, the, the what we can see and understand, that we will be so connected to you, so sensitive to who you are as God, that we will not disobey, that we will say, nevertheless, Lord, I don't see how that can work. That goes against our common HR principles and handbook. But God, because you say so, I will do it. Lord, this goes against our marketing practice and principle. No one wins clients that kind of way. I'm going to look silly, but nevertheless, because you say so, I'll do it. Lord, Lord, this, 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 this teaching methodology that you're telling me to employ, it goes against the regular teaching practice. It goes against the regular, the regular curriculum execution. But nevertheless, because you say so, I will do it. Lord, this engineering procedure that you're asking me to follow, this way that you're asking me to connect the light or connect the, 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 the engineering process or do the economics or do the banking, the, the, the banking process, this way you're asking me to do it may get me fired may get me in trouble but nevertheless oh god because you are the one asking come on somebody the way you engage the customer service process, God wants to raise you to a next level. And the way you talk to the customers, it's according to a script. It's according to a handbook. But God is saying this morning, I'm going to raise you to the next level. And so I'm downloading a fresh methodology. I'm downloading another way of speaking to your customers when you call them, of praying for your customers when you're praying with them. Come on, somebody. God is doing a new thing and he's doing it from the customer side he's doing it from the fish side he's putting them in place so that it will be easy for you to catch them as soon as you obey oh come on somebody hallelujah 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 and so we our job is to get into that place where we can hear God speak as Peter on the beach when Jesus spoke he was able to hear him and because he knew him come on he was able to obey without question. It is difficult to obey someone you don't know. It is difficult to obey someone you don't know. As a matter of fact, it is difficult enough to obey someone you do know. <laughs> Come on. How many times have we disobeyed God? How many? Hey. I know I have been guilty. Y'all are perfect. Y'all don't disobey none at all. Y'all do everything that is right before God every time. I'm not there yet. Pray for me, please. Hallelujah. There's still moments and times when I disobey, some knowingly and some unknowingly, most unknowingly. But I still disobey from time to time. But as we get to know God more, as we get to know his voice, as we get to know his character and nature, it begins to affect the things around us. Because as we know him, we're able to obey. Don't do this. Do this. Do this this way. Don't do that that way. We get to know him. And so that's when God begins to manifest through us, even as he manifests in us. So the God of all creation lives in us. But for most of us in the kingdom, for most of us, maybe even in this fourth watch family, the manifestation of God through us is very limited, very limited. And that has to change. That has to change. And so we're asking God this morning, Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, by your power and your anointing, by the same care that you had for Peter, by the same way you wanted to show everyone on the beach that you are Lord and that you are the Savior and that you came to show life and life more abundantly to all who will accept. We ask you this morning as your family. We ask you this morning as your people. We ask you, God Almighty, to direct our path. We ask you to tell us where to go, what to do, how to do it. 
that we might have good success, that our ship might be laden with fish, with the catch that you want us to have, that exceeds expectation, that we have to call for help, or we have to call for help to spend the money that you have given us. We have to call for help to, to, to nurture and to, 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 um, to disciple the souls that you win for our ministry, that God Almighty, we have to call for help, hallelujah, to share some of the sugar that is in our family, hallelujah, the sugar of love the sugar of peace the sugar of joy that a hey god everyone is asking us how do you maintain such peace such joy such love because we know you lord jesus we thank you this morning oh god that nothing shall by any means make us anxious or frustrated or annoyed because we know you and we know what to do because we know you in the name of jesus christ of nazareth hallelujah hallelujah Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for a fresh move of your spirit upon every Fourth Watch family member today in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 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 So this morning we want to give birth to obedience. We want to give birth to obedience. Obedience to everything that God says. Obedience is key. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Obedience is required. Hallelujah. Obedience is desired. God wants us to be obedient. And it, as we're obedient, it demonstrates trust. It demonstrates acquaintance. It demonstrates friendship. It demonstrates submission. Obedience is important. Hallelujah. For those of you who have children, you know that when you speak to your children and they don't obey, it says, it says other things. It speaks to rebellion. It speaks to lack of respect. It, it speaks to lack of trust. Amen? And the same thing even in, 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 in older relationships, in marriages, in dating, courting. Obedience demonstrates a confidence in the person. Amen? And remember, it's not all the time somebody can choose to disobey because they know something that you don't. But do we know anything that God doesn't? Are we ever more knowledgeable than God, even about ourselves? When God says, obey, stop drinking so much sugar. Come on. It's because he knows that in the future, five years from now, diabetes is in your bloodline. Diabetes is a possible um, encounter that you will have five years from now. And so he's telling you now, stop drinking so much sugar. But you have a sugar, a, a sweet tooth. A sugar rush you love sweet I remember this friend of mine um, she she <laughs> she and her family she her husband and her two children loved condensed milk and they would use one tin of condensed milk every morning with with their with in their tea in their and their in their hot beverage one whole tin of condensed milk it had to be sweet until it was insipid and they would just enjoy that and love it that's not healthy but because they are young and fit right now it won't show now and so sometimes there are things that we're doing encounters that we're having places that we're going people that we have in our lives that god will say you need to start severing cutting off stop doing that stop going there stop dealing with that person stop having that relationship and we often say but it's not doing anything bad now it's not producing any negativity now. It's not stopping me from being a Christian. And God is saying, not now, but it will in the future. And so we have to trust him. We have to know him enough and trust him enough for when he speaks to listen like Peter. Because in the end, we're the one that will get a catch, get a blessing, get a victory that is beyond what we could have asked, think, or imagined in the name of Jesus Christ. So come on, people of God, can we listen intently and can we make a, a promise to God? Father, I desire to obey you. Teach me how to. I don't know how to obey. I have not been an obedient person. I have, I, I <laughs> uh, Jesus, I'm telling you, we see, Pastor Marsha and I see some people each day. We see women. I was talking to a lady and the lady says, Pastor, 
my husband and I constantly get into bickering and arguments. Constantly. And I said, why? She said, because I like to rule. I like to run things. And during my younger years, anytime I'm dating a man, if, if, if anytime he says anything that I don't like or anytime, I always go into a relationship with a wall. I go into a relationship knowing that this is not going to last. I, 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 because I'm not taking any foolishness. And if he says or done any, do anything foolish, I just said, okay, it's over. See you. And so she developed this callous kind of heart position that now she's a Christian, saved, walking with God, but she still has the same characteristics. And what we don't know is that those characteristics, yes, <laughs> yes, Sean, she bad so. And, 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 and she says it. And when she gets angry, when I asked her, I said, so woman of God, do you still get angry? And she says, yes. And I said, to, you, to the point where you want to fight. <laughs> she leaned back and laughed and say, eh. <laughs> like she's saying, so what's the purpose of being angry if you're not going to fight? And so she says that she's at the place now as a Christian where she doesn't physically get into altercations with her spouse, but she still shouts and she still uses her tongue like a sword to, to, to accomplish her angry anger, anger blows. But I'm saying to you, as you get to know Jesus, I had to explain to her, woman of God, there are some things that you say you're a Christian and you say you're submitted to God, but the demonstration of your submission to God is obedience to what the word says. The word says you are to honor your husband. And so even if your husband does something that will cause you to be angry and you feel like you need to tell him about his mother and his sister and his brother and about the bones that make him up, you got to know that God is saying that's dishonor even if he deserves it come on somebody and so it is usually never easy to obey God because what he's asking you to do goes against your natural desires often often what God asks us to do goes against our natural desire so here it is that this woman of God now has been trained up by Satan to defend herself, to always take dominion and control, to be the boss lady. And God is now saying, no, you're not the boss lady, you're a helpmeet. Hey! <laughs> you sister Cheryl, God is now saying, hey, you are no longer a boss lady, you are no longer in control, you are now a helpmeet. Mm. how do you accomplish that you cannot accomplish that unless you get to know God so I had to tell her I said woman of God it's, it, it, it's going to be hard for you if you try to please your husband because God says so it's going to be hard to please your husband because God says so so she stopped and she looked at me and she was like I'm confused isn't that supposed to be what I'm supposed to do? Yes, it is. But I'm saying to you, people of God, listen to me carefully. You have to set your heart to please God. And in pleasing God, you do the manifestation of that pleasing God to your spouse, to your children, to your boss, to your co-workers. It's not doing to them to please God. It is pleasing God by doing to them now it sounds like the same thing but it's not because your focus is not what you're doing for them but what you're doing for god and so because god will never discourage you from doing when the people receive what you're doing and they frustrate you they annoy you they are disrespecting to you they are unappreciative of what you are doing, you will not be discouraged and stop. So the disciples, though they were discouraged by not catching any fish that whole night, they were still encouraged to go back out because they weren't doing it because they have a desire to catch fish. They were doing it because they had a the desire to please Jesus. Wow. Come on, somebody should get that. When we do things from a desire to please Jesus Christ of Nazareth by the Holy Spirit, it doesn't matter whether we win or lose. 
it doesn't matter whether it seem like we failed it doesn't matter if we are embarrassed or whatever because we already know that those who look to him are radiant and their faces will never be covered with shame so it may look like shame to man but it is not shame to God amen hallelujah hallelujah what a god what a god what a god so let's get to know him let's get to know him like wow because when we get to know him it's easier to obey him it's never easy to obey god i'm telling you no matter all the, the, the so-called purest christians who talk about who oh, anything where god say me do it it's never easy to obey god because god seldomly asks us to do things that are easy why is that so because he requires that we do whatever he asks us by and through his holy spirit come on and so we have to get to know his holy spirit that when we are given an assignment we say holy spirit you have to help me with this you know because this not easy i don't think i can manage this you have to help me holy spirit you have to touch my heart and teach me you have to touch the person's heart that is supposed to get this word because if they receive it wrong, there could be a fight. You have to help me. This person hates my guts. How am I going to go tell them that I love them? They don't want to hear this. I did them wrong and they now hate me and don't speak to me. And you're telling me I must go tell them I love them? I, can, I don't know how to do that, Holy Spirit. And so I'm asking you to help me because I want to obey. And when that is our port of call, when that is our instruction, when that is our direction, then when we go, we will find that the Holy Spirit would have already done a work because he knows fish. Come on. And so that fish would have been prepared and be in place. And when you said, you know, um, I've been meaning to just say to you that I love you. I love you with the love of the Lord. I'm sorry for the things that I've done to you. And I love you. And you're expecting them to say, I don't want to hear it. I still hate you. I'm mad at you. I'm upset. I don't want to hear anything. I don't want to have anything to do with you. But because they are fish, and God knows fish, God has already prepared that fish. And the person will just say, Jacob and Esau. Yeah, I, come on. Hallelujah. Pastor Masha said like Jacob and Esau. Esau hated Jacob like, whoa. He took his birthright. He relegated him to, to, to someone who, though he lived well, he lived well beneath what was ordained for him in the spirit. Come on. And so Jacob was nervous, thinking that Esau was going to sort him out. But God, who created the fish of Esau, already put him in a position that Jacob could be victorious. Come on. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah hallelujah so we have to know god in such a way that it makes it easier for us to obey even when we don't understand what he say come on amen hallelujah so our job is to get to know him get to know his voice my sheep know my voice they hear my voice and another they will not obey because we know him so let's get to know him so that we can give birth to obedience because an obedient life is a victorious life. Yeah. A life that is obedient to God is a victorious life. You cannot fail. The devil cannot prevail if we don't fail to obey God. Never fail to obey him. Obedience is better than sacrifice and obedience brings prosperity and good success amen hallelujah hallelujah what a mighty god we serve hallelujah 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 it's friday it's friday i just want to give you a quick testimony we're going to do a little bit of word uh this morning as well as since god has encouraged us so much um we want to to to, to be encouraged uh to continue to just give birth to the things that god wants us to give birth to but yesterday god gave me an opportunity to give birth to something that um that 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 really brings home the point of this morning i didn't even realize uh, the connection um, until I started to say it uh, a, a testimony someone turned up at church yesterday um, 
just off the streets and said that someone sent him uh, we didn't have an appointment and, and the person didn't look like you know someone that you would want to make an extra effort to, to to engage especially since we were busy doing other things and up and down and taking care of other issues um, knowing that we didn't have any appointment so he sat down and um, he asked Pastor Marsha for a piece of paper and he started to write on the paper and Pastor Marsha said Pastor you know him I said no I don't know him so we asked him who sent him why is he here and um, he call someone's name to say the person sent him but I don't even know who that person is anyway um, you know when you are required to love when you are required to love even when it is not easy come on God will say still love and so I cleared a part of my schedule and um, and say okay come on let's talk and when he came into the office I said what can I do for you he says pastor I am I am having a hard time I am struggling in life I am having a difficult time and I, I, I don't want to live anymore. I want to die. And so I came here today and I have written a suicide letter. I've written a letter to my daughter who is a, a, a nail technician and he told me where, did, where his daughter works and how I can find her. And he says, Pastor, I'm going to ask you to do me a favor to take this letter it is written to my daughter and to my ex-wife and I want them to receive to, to know that I love them but I can't embarrass my family and myself anymore as a man I want to die I'm gonna go down to the boulevard bridge and I'm gonna jump off and that's it I'm gonna end it and I sat patiently and I listened to him and I had no clue why he was there I had no clue what he was going through I had no clue what he was going to say and what he was gonna do are you hearing me but the Spirit of God that is in me and I know God's love for him and so I was able to open my mouth and let the Holy Spirit speak to him and I started out by showing him all the things that he should be grateful for that there are insane people on the street that are wandering around but they they don't want to die they still want to live they want to live until Jesus come, even in their insanity. But you have a sound mind. You can think. You found your way here. And you are sitting before me having a conversation. You are in your right mind. But you want to kill yourself when people not in their sound mind are trying to live. I said there are blind people on the streets that are walking and have to get help to go across the street or to find their way home. But you have eyes can see, yet you want to kill yourself when they are living in darkness but are still pursuing light. I said there are people who cannot hear. They are in schools for the mute and the, and the, and the, and the deaf. And they, all can make, they can only make sound and, and sign language. And, and yet still they are pursuing each day. Pursuing each day as if they have all their faculties, all their elements, all their, 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 their extremities in place and working perfectly. You have them but yet you want to die. You're not in the hospital. You're not sick. You have two hands, two feet. You can run. You can chop. You can fight. You can, you, can, you can do whatever it takes to make it in this life. You have all the equipment, yet you want to die. And people who do not have the equipment are trying to live. How do you get to that point? And then I started to testify of my own story when I too was like him, when I felt like there was no need to go on, when I felt so, so, so broken, so shattered that I wanted to kill myself and I even attempted it and God sent a savior uh, to, to, to grab me as I jumped off the bridge. Uncannily, he was planning to jump off a bridge and I jumped off one and someone grabbed me around my waist and pulled me back and draw me up and took me home half naked in the snow in America and he took me home and that saving grace of God is why I'm here today so truly when the songwriter says I am here today because God kept me I have a wife today only because of his grace I have a family today because God kept me. Hallelujah. God kept me.
One songwriter say, I almost gave up. I felt like I just couldn't take life anymore. My problems had me down. How do we say? Yeah, depression made me bound. Weighed me down. Weighed me down. Hey, hallelujah. But God held me close. So I wouldn't let go. God mercies kept me. So I wouldn't let go. We're here today only because God kept us. We're here today because he's the master fisher, fisher of men. We're here today because he knows us more than we know ourselves. Hallelujah. Okay. You know the other verse of that song says, I've almost gave up. I was right at the edge yes. of a bridge. My God, show, my God. But couldn't see. But couldn't see. We're always, when we're walking with God, yes, I felt it same time. Too. Same time. Hallelujah. Hey, God. Hey, God. Come on, people of God. Come on. Hallelujah. Sometimes we get depressed. We feel oppressed. We feel like we can't make it. Our, our, our relationship is not going the way we expected. Our business is not flourishing the way we expect. Our children are not behaving the way we expect. And we feel like, you know, it's better to give up. I'm saying to you that the best testimony is not that you failed, but that by God's grace you prevailed. Mm. Amen. And so as I, as I told him my story of the same journey, I told him how I was torn down from, from being an executive wearing suits every day and tie every day and in air condition every day to having to walk and to take the bus. And people would pass me and pretend like they didn't know me because I was now like a madman in their eyes. But look at me today because I kept living. Sometimes you don't know what to do or how to do it. But all you have to do is stay living. Don't give up. Don't give up. Choose life. Mm. Choose life, says the Lord. Choose to live. Even if you just sit in a corner and do nothing, choose to live. Choose to live. Come on, Rosalie. Just choose to live no matter what's going on, no matter how oppressed, no matter how much the devil fights you, choose to live. Mm. Sores on your body and you have to be scratching it with, with broken pieces of, of clay pot, choose to live. You check your bank account and it says it is so empty that they, they, they I don't know how the account still stay open, choose to live. Keep giving birth to life. It's not the end. Mm. Many people, I met a man years ago when I used to work at CVM TV, and he said, uh, Rowan, when I, when I went to Miami and met with him, he said, listen, I've started over five times in my life. Five times from zero. Five times. He was divorced three out of the five times, and that divorce wiped him out clean. And when I met him, he was 50. No, sorry. When I met him, he was 60. And he said, the last time I start over from zero, flat out, had nothing, I was 50 years old. And when I met him, he took me to his apartment. He lived in a penthouse apartment at, um, at, at, at what do you call it? Tinder Beach, Florida. The place where the movie stars and basketball stars live. In South Beach, yes, that's it, South Beach. That's where he had an apartment, a penthouse. I went upstairs in the elevator, and when the, when the elevator opened, it opens into his apartment. What are you telling me about people? He could have committed suicide five times over, but he kept living. He didn't know how he was going to do it, but he kept living. He didn't know what he was going to do, but he kept living. I'm saying to you, if we have God in our lives, he wasn't even saved. If we have God in our lives, there is no reason to contemplate suicide, to contemplate giving up, to contemplate victory for the enemy. All we have to do is keep living. Because if we keep living, Two things that we know for sure. God will keep giving. And he will, entail, he will make sure we keep living. Amen. He will keep forgiving. And he will keep giving. And so we must press in. And keep living. Press in with hope. Press in with peace. Press in with joy. Press in with confidence. That he who has begun a good work is faithful. 
no matter what you see happening, liken it unto the fishing all night, washing out your nets. They could say, I'm never going fishing again because this is not working out. There's no way we could spend eight hours on the sea and come back empty-handed. Not even bait? No, that's not right. I'm not going back. But when someone who didn't know anything about that said, go back now, didn't even make a day pass so they could sleep it off, go back now, they went back because they gave birth to the confidence of living. Let's keep living, guys. Let's keep living and God will keep giving. And when we feel like we're failed, when we feel like we can't go anymore, when we feel like, God, I, 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 need to, I need to die. I need, to, I need for you to come or I need to die. I need to come home. I cannot go another day. Just repent because our Lord keeps forgiving. Let's give birth only to life. Because it is when we live through the situations and circumstances that other people will be able to look on. Less people would commit suicide if they saw our life as one, our lives as one that overcame and got to the top. Let's press and overcome that others might be encouraged. Let's make that business work despite Everyone's saying it's time to close it. It's time to give up. Let's continue to press and say, God, you are the God that caused Peter to get an overflow when there was none. Make my business overflow when everyone else is saying, shut it down. Make my life an overflowing life for your glory when everyone says I am no longer a success. Teach me how to trust you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 This is heavy for a Friday, don't. But guess what? The long, the, the end of the story is um, the gentleman was, uh, he, he had traveled from another parish to come to Kingston. He didn't have any way of, um, anywhere to stay, any, any food, any way to get back home. And so he was depressed. And he felt like this was the last straw because he had been struggling and didn't, didn't know where to get any help from, didn't know what to do. But he pushed out and came out into the deep of Liberty for Living Ministries. And the Lord caused him to catch fish. He was encouraged when he was leaving. Pastor Marshall said, what he did to him? <laughs> when he came in, he looked like he only had his last breath. Like he was crawling. He dragged himself into the office, basically. Hallelujah. That's but when he was leaving, way. he was dancing. Mm -hmm. He said, Pastor, just to know that you had a story like mine, just to know that you were at the place where you would have committed suicide as well, and God kept you, you recovered, and here you are today. Mm -hmm. I'm so encouraged. He was dancing going out. Pastor Marshall run around to my office and said, what you, <laughs> what you tell him? What you give him? Come on. Mm -hmm. Come on, guys. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. So the things that we go through are not to depress us, to suppress us, mm -hmm. or to kill us. It is to help us mm -hmm. to be an encouragement, a ladder for those who don't have Jesus or who don't know him that well to climb upon and to get to the place of his face and avoid disgrace in this human race. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Sister Cheryl, the power of words. The power of words. The power of encouragement. Mm -hmm. All of us need it at some point in time. All of us. And, and, so, and when you think about how much God loves each and every one of us, yes. remember the appointment would have been at the time when the gentleman came. Yes. But the person called My God. and said that they had to reschedule mm. however we were still doing something because we had some other people there yes but it god still gave him room to get a word in Benefit. because god wanted to save him thank you jesus and he allowed him to come to someone who had a similar experience mm. and look at me now and look My at god. me now experience to pull him out of that Thank pit. you, Jesus. That's it. Mm -hmm. That's how strategic God is yes, when he's dealing with us. 
That's how strategic God is when he's dealing with his people. He gives us every opportunity to succeed. Every opportunity. Mm. Hallelujah. That's right, Sister Cheryl. God was making a way for that man. And I'm just so grateful. Guys, we have to become so excited and happy when God can put us in a position to be the ones to bless those who he wants to bless. That's the greatest. Listen, some of us are always seeking, running down, chasing after prophets and and and, and soothsayers and and obia men and and all these people who can tell us what we need to hear and encourage us but i'm saying to you we need to pursue god so that he can make us into one who is the helper of others the greatest joy is not to go before a prophet and receive a word of prophecy but for others to come before you so that you can prophesy to them you can help them to become their best and so a prophetic word of encouragement is excellent but being able to give one is even more excellent come on somebody there will always be somebody to prophesy to you but there won't always be a prophetic word in you for somebody and so we must pray lord let a word be in me let a love be in me. Let a testimony be in me. Let an encouragement be in me. That whoever is passing by and is in need, they will have a well from which to drink. That they can rise up again. Yes, that's right. Lord, help me to be the answer to someone's prayer. I love that, Sister Joan. Well said. We must pray every day. Father, Make me the answer to someone's prayer. As you were the answer to, to Peter and the disciples' prayer on so many occasions. You were the answer to Jairus' prayer. You were the answer to the centurion's prayer. You were the answer to blind Bartimaeus' prayer. You were the answer to the woman bent over for 18 years. The man at the pool of Bethesda for 38 the woman with the issue of blood. You were the answer. Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, today, make every fourth watch family member the answer. Make us the answer like you, Lord Jesus. Wherever we go, make us the answer in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. But teach us how to be obedient because obedience is what produces the answer to what ails this world Amen. this world is in need of an answer can we be the answer by God's grace yes we can yes we can yes we can hallelujah 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 Woo! we're almost out of time can we can we can we drop in a line of the word praise God hallelujah Hallelujah, hallelujah. I want to um I want you to turn with me in the in your in your scriptures to um the book of John chapter 16 and verse 21. Turn with me to the book of John quickly. We're just gonna read one verse. The book of John, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, John chapter 16 and verse 21. One verse. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, John, move quickly. John chapter 16. Yes, 16. And verse 21. John chapter 16, verse 21 says, Hallelujah. A woman giving birth to a child has pain. A woman giving birth to a child has pain because her time has come. When we're giving birth and our time has come, we will experience discomfort. When we're giving birth to a ministry, when we're giving birth to, 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 to a sacrificed life, when we're giving birth to a life that is submitted, when we're giving birth to a new life that is that, that does not keep us in control we are not the one at the boss we're not the one giving orders instructions directions corrections 
we're now the one receiving. When we're giving birth to that life, God is saying to us that it is like a woman who is giving birth and she's in pain. Lord, it, it hurts me to not be the boss. It hurts me to not be the one giving the instructions. But now to take order. It is similar to a woman literally giving birth. Because at the moment of that water breaking, at the moment of that, that pushing, there is great discomfort. When we're about to give birth to what God wants us to give birth to, there is great discomfort. Mm -hmm. Great discomfort. The enemy attacks like, whoa, he tells you that the pain is greater than it even is. He tells you that there's a chance that you might die in child's birth. He tells you all kinds of things. That's why when you're about to get a breakthrough, the attacks come in greater measure because the pain of the birthing of your blessing, of your anointing, of your power, of your transformation comes with pain. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. It comes with pain like it does in the natural. It says, because your time has come, that pain comes as well. Hallelujah. Come on. And it says, uh, 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 but when her baby is born, my God, oh, somebody need to hear this this morning. When the baby is born, when the ministry is birthed, I knew when, 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 when Pastor Marsha and I had the discussion and she said, um, this, 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 this fourth watch devotion is going to go. I was like, are you joking? Give birth to something from 5 a.m.? I'm a 6 a.m. man. My devotion starts at 6 a.m. I'm telling you. Why? Because it's comfortable. At 6 a.m. I am all I'm fully rested most of the time. I, I can make the sacrifice because it's easy. At 6 a.m. that's my time to get up and to do stuff. Uh, that's my comfort zone. But when God said 5 a.m., I was like, are you joking? Uh-uh. I can't manage that. It felt like pain. Giving birth to that was just like whoa. But when the time had come. And, 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 and the birthing pain, it was difficult in the first instance. But when the baby came, when the Fort Watch family started to form, when the Fort Watch family was interacting and going on, when you saw the joy of people who were just enjoying the time, oh my goodness, the pain, mm -hmm. the birth pangs, all oh, was gone. Mm -hmm. And God is saying, if you go through a little bit of pain for me, hallelujah, it won't be in vain. Amen. Hallelujah. And so it says that, uh, 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 but when her baby is born, she forgets the anguish. When the baby comes, when the ministry is birthed, when the marriage comes, when you get past the, the bickering and the arguing and the disagreements in the marriage, that, that, that's when the baby comes, the, the, the gift of the grace of a great marriage. When that begins to take shape and begins to manifest, that's when you're saying, whoa, God, I'm glad I bore the pain. I'm glad that I didn't give up when the baby was being born. Oh, hallelujah. I'm glad that I pushed through Brother O'Neill. I'm glad that when I had to walk and sweat, when people thought I was worthless, when they thought that I wasn't a, a, a man enough, that I wasn't a father enough, a husband enough, when they thought that I wouldn't make it, when they thought that I would give up, uh, I, I knew that I would still make it because I'm alive. And I'm alive today, not because of my efforts, but because God kept me. Amen. And so we, when, when we go through that birthing, it hurts like, whoa, but guess what? God is able to move, to cause us to forget the anguish and to hold what we have birthed with joy. It says, it, it, because, the ang because of her joy that a child is born into the world. When our ministry, when our anointing, when our gifting is birthed, the pain that we feel when it is being birthed. Some of us, our, 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 our purpose is to be birthed in our workplace, in our church, and even our very pastor is saying, who are you again? You can't sing. You can't preach. You're not an evangelist. You're an engineer. How are you going to go on the choir when, when, when all you know is engineering? How are you going to preach when all you know is marketing and sales? You're a sales and marketing person. Go, go market the church. 
You're not called to be a preacher. But God told you in the midnight hour that he's giving birth. He has impregnated you with a preacher's anointing. He has impregnated you with an evangelistic anointing. Come on, hallelujah. But because of what you do in the natural, because of how you live in the natural, your man's, the, 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 your, 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 your head or your papa, as some of them call them, can't see it yet because he's only seeing you in this pain. He's seeing you you in your pregnant state and so he's causing that birthing to be painful he or she is causing that birthing to be painful because they don't know what you're giving birth to but once you have given birth the joy comes i remember some tough conversations i had with my senior pastor when god said it's time to move tough conversations I left some time from those conversations feeling so sad and so hurt and so broken that I didn't even want to go back to have any more. The last one I had, Pastor Marsha had to literally force me, force me, give me an ultimatum. And that was the best one. When I went and had that conversation, it was the best one. Because by that time, hallelujah, the baby had birthed. And it was evident for all to see. And so it was, yes, let's join together and celebrate this baby. Let's help this baby grow and become. And so you're going to face pain, discomfort, anguish even, when you're in the throes of giving birth. But I guarantee you that once you keep pushing, once you don't give up and cause a breach, come on. Once you don't close the passage where the birthing is taking place and cause the birthing to stop, as long as you keep pushing, the anguish, the pain, the discomfort, the screams will only be for a short time. But what you will give birth to will be a wonderful joy for a long time. Mm -hmm. Let's push and give birth to what God wants us to give birth to because there is joy to come despite the pain. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 What a mighty God. So that's John. Hallelujah. 16 and verse 21. Let's just mark that and just begin to look at it in our own way and in our own time so that the Holy Spirit can give us revelation for our own life. Hallelujah, because he says, as long as we continue to press, as long as we continue to push, we will give birth. Hallelujah. It, it, the last line says, hallelujah, for her joy that a child is born into the world. It means that everything that we give birth to is for the world. Come on, glory to God. We're out of time, so I can't even explore that revelation. But I'm saying to you, everything that God has called us to give birth to, Fort Watch family, is for the world. Amen. Hallelujah. So give birth, man. Push. Don't block it. Don't stop it. Don't be fearful. Push and give birth because the world is waiting for whatever you are pregnant with, says the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Our God reigns. Our God reigns. Our God reigns. Our God reigns. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The world is waiting for what we are pregnant with. Push past the pain and the anguish and give birth that men may receive and believe that Jesus Christ is Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for your goodness and mercy towards us. Thank you for your love, for your power, for your grace and for your mercy. Thank you, Lord, that every heart that was touched this morning is a fertile soil that will bring forth a fruit tree that will be a blessing to others, that we will give birth to what this world needs to solve its issues. Because we are the fertile soil and the seed soil of your love and of your blessing. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, sanctify and consecrate these emblems even now we ask. Sanctify them, O God, that as we eat of them, we will become more energized, more wise, and be a prize to this world. Touch your blood, O God, that it will give us life and life more abundantly. That from your life we will run and never be weary and walk and never faint. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And teach us how to love the way you love. 
to forgive the way you forgave and to live as you live. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. And so as the Lord Jesus Christ took the bread, he blessed it and broke it. He gave it to the disciples and he said, Eat, this is my body broken for you. As often as you eat of it, you do it in remembrance of me. Eat ye all of it in faith. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Likewise, he took the cup. He blessed it and took a sup and he said, Drink, this is my blood, the blood of the new covenant. As often as you drink of it, you do it in remembrance of me. Drink ye all of it in faith, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, so thank you so much for joining us, not just today, but all of this week. You have been faithful sons and daughters of the Most High God, and I pray that God will open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing upon each and every one of you that you will not have room enough to receive. You'll be so blessed that you can be a blessing to others in spiritual things and natural things. Uncommon overflow. I declare over you today. I declare that the Lord will keep you from all harm and danger. Every plot, scheme, and trap of the enemy that has been set up to befall you on this weekend, we cancel them in advance in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And we declare that this weekend shall be a restful and yet productive weekend for each and every one of you under the sound of my voice in the name of Jesus Christ. Raise your hands for the blessing. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you his peace. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Go forth, family, and have an amazing day, God's way. For our God has already shaken everything that is evil out of your day, his way. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Remember, Jesus love you. And we love the whole I want to. God bless you all. Remember to encourage someone, not just today, but over this weekend. Let's practice to go about doing good. Let's practice to live as Jesus lived in obedience. The Bible says he learned obedience through the things he suffered. There are people that you will seek to do good for. And it will be like suffering because... They are not grateful. They are not receptive and any of those things. But still press. Still give birth to kindness. Still give birth to love. Regardless of the birth pangs. And you will see the rewards in due, kind, in due season. If you faint not. <coughs> in Jesus name. God bless you. Have a safe weekend. May angels watch stand share guard over you. Me. Remember to share when you are leaving. So others can be blessed as well. And it is well with your soul. God bless you. Bye. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.